it for the YouTube. So, but I want to welcome you all to this class. This class is called Until Christ is Formed in You. And I'm just going to be sharing today uh, a, a slideshow. We'll kind of come away from that from time to time. Um, and as we come away from it, we'll, we'll uh, maybe be able to kind of see each other a little bit better. Um, I did I did send out uh, an assignment or some sort of a connection point for tonight so that we could work together on uh on something and if you didn't come with a an item then then when we share then it'll be okay if you want to share just verbally or if you don't it's okay too but my goal for this class is a, a lot of formation comes through talking it comes through collaborating take you know sharing testimony and things like that so this class may be a little different than a lot of the other classes in that way but i hope it'll bless you and if it stretches you a little bit i think that's okay um i'll share some stories about my own journey along the way but i want to start with a prayer so if you would join me uh, in, a, in an opening prayer before we start into the teaching tonight. Heavenly Father, you are so good to us, and today we can stop right now. Uh, the day can catch up with us. It's okay. Um, but also, whatever we've been through today, whatever stresses, uh, whatever joys, all of that is a part of our soul right now as so we come to this time. And quite honestly, we can talk a lot about spiritual formation and you being formed in us. Uh, but that happens through us taking a deep breath and realizing you're right here with us. That in all that our souls need tonight, you have an adequate resource for all of our souls. That we're not missing out on anything today. We lack nothing because you're our shepherd. In fact, not only are we not missing out on anything, but we're headed toward everything and that's such a compelling thought tonight as we press in together i not only pray that we would be changed and transformed even tonight as we begin this journey through the next few months um but that we would even increase our bond together as a as a class and i just pray that whatever you need to do uh, to bring us forward that you will do that we just want to know you better, and that's the whole point, is that we would know you better, because this is eternal life, Jesus said, that we would know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And so, Holy Spirit, lead us into all truth. May your presence be potent with us today. Minister to us. Let us glorify you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, my friends, I'm going to start through this um, presentation here. I have a, a few important things before we start sharing and getting into the teaching. Um, I just want to encourage you to bring your calendar to class each week. And the reason that I want you to do that is because, whether it's on your computer or you have a, maybe you have a calendar you write in, it doesn't really matter how you do it. But I, I want each week for us to kind of end our time with us picking a time during the week uh, ahead, like the coming week from Wednesday to Wednesday when we will either take the practice that I give in the notes, the syllabus, or if you're picking a certain practice that we're talking about, like solitude or scripture study or celebration or whatever the, 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 uh, the, the practice may be, that you're going ahead before you leave the class and at least looking at your calendar to see if you have a time when you can practice it and setting that ahead of time. So I want us to be really intentional. Um, and that's the reason for that. So if you can, starting next week, just make sure that you have a calendar with you if you can. I'll try to send it. I'll put it in the email uh, next week to remind you. But that's really important, I think. Another thing, too, is if if you can't um, be here and you have to watch on YouTube, that's perfectly fine. But I do need to know that you watched it. So in my emails out, I'll put my email, my email and my phone number, my cell number. That way, when you watch it, when you're finished, just text me or email me to tell me that you did, and I can mark you present for that class. And that would be really helpful. And that'll also be restated in the emails, too. Um, another thing is we have, I'll have a weekly relational practice. I call it a relational practice, not a discipline, because the real heart of, of growing in Christ and Him being formed is relational. That's what they're for. They're not 
you know, the things we call spiritual disciplines are not to be burdensome. They're supposed to help you relate to God. And if you're not relating to God through them, then it's not really what it's supposed to be. So I call them relational practices, but I will give you a weekly relational practice. That's pretty simple, pretty easy. And um, you're welcome to do those. They're optional though. If, if you're practicing one of the primary practices that we cover and you don't want to do the one that's listed there for you, then by all means, don't feel obligated to do those. They're just like, if you want to ease into it and you don't have a lot of time, you may not want to take one of the main ones and practice it, but you might have time to do the ones I list for you. So, so there will be two, you know, an opportunity for you to practice different ones, but the one I give you every week, just know that um, if you decide not to do it, it is optional. It's not going to reflect on your grade. It's just going to help you relate to God better during the week. And that's when we'll take our calendars out and talk about that. So, Another thing is, if you're taking this for credit, um, you're you're going to have your grade based on turning in a class note page. I do not have one for tonight, so those will start next week. <clears throat> but each each week, I'll send you a note page, and you can print it off or just keep it on your Word document. And then um, it'll just have a few blanks on it. You'll just listen to the lecture, go through the time together, fill in the blanks, and then all you have to do then is uh, make sure that I get a copy of it somehow, either through text or you can text a picture of it to me or you can email it back to me or whatever. But that's part of it. And then just participating in the practices and talking about them. So like, let's say three of you share next week. Then the following week, I'm going to probably pick three other people. And then the following week, maybe three other people. I'm just wanting to see, make sure that you're doing a few practices as we grow in Christ together. Those will be the most important thing. And then at the end of the semester in, in November, I'm going to have you write a paragraph I, I, it says final report, which sounds kind of scary, but it's not. All it's going to be is you you telling me how you grew the most, what you learned about life with God. And so that'll be pretty short and easy, but that's part of your grade. And then I will have a kind of a question test that we'll make sure we go over everything for the week before it. It will not be uh, anything that will be really out of scope uh, for you. I mean, it shouldn't make you nervous. You should be well prepared by the time we get there. But if you are taking for a grade, these are the these are the things that I'll be looking for. So finally, I'm available to you. I want to be available to you. My point is growth here, personal spiritual growth in Christ. And so if you have any questions, you need to have a conversation about one of your practices. You don't understand it. You have an insight that you learned and you want to text me about it. Um, these things you can do to me privately. It's OK. Um, I'll I'll take emails and um, and, uh, and and text like that. So just feel free to reach out. So there's some of the things I want to share with you as before we get started. So now we're going to kind of move into, um, I'm going to give you a little introduction. This won't take long, uh, so just bear with me. I just want you to know a little bit about my own life. I was sharing a little bit at the beginning that I did go to South Houston Bible Institute. You can see the young guy with hair there. That is me. I don't have hair anymore, <laughs> but um, it wasn't because of SHBI, I promise. Um, I uh, really enjoyed my time there, and the gentleman there handing me my ordination certificate is B. Shelburne whose father actually formed the Bible Institute. And B was the past president recently, and now Kirk Hayes is. So um, anyway, B is uh, handing over my ordination to me there, presenting it to me as I finished the coursework, was ordained to the ministry. Um, and that was in South Houston. South Houston, Texas is where that took place. And then now, since then, I've, um, I've married. And so I've got my little dot. This is my wife, Anna, right here. Um, and we had five kids. Um, this is my oldest, Stephen. Um, and then my second is Alex. And this is his wife, Emily. That was their wedding last year. Uh, my third is Isaac and his wife, Abby. They were married a couple years ago. And then I've got my fourth son, Peyton, who's about 6'6". Six, six. He's the tallest one of us. And then my daughter, Emma, who's 17. She's still in high school. Um, and so this is kind of my crew uh, together uh, here in Indiana. Not all of them live in Indiana, but um, most of them do so. That's kind of my family at this point. Um, I work at the McKinley Hill Church of Christ in Brazil, Indiana. So there are two Brazils, uh, one's in South America, one's here in, in Indiana. And uh, this is the picture of where I work as a pastor. Um, in about 2015, I really got stuck in my life and I would say in my spiritual formation. And so I've been seeking to become a new creation through spiritual practices. Um, you see the 
uh, 15 Laws of Growth there. That's a John Maxwell book. I don't know who, how, how many of you are familiar with him, but um, but his book had a particular chapter in it that kind of explained to me why I was stuck. And so I began my journey of saying, I've got to grow. I've got to grow. I've got to grow. There's no way I can stay the way I am and continue the work that God has for me to do. And I didn't know how to do that because in our churches, a lot of times, uh, you know, we are very good with the scripture, but not always always so maybe strong in teaching formation and uh, discipleship. Um, and that's not a knock. It's just I didn't know how to do it. I, I didn't really. I could watch what my dad did. He was a good um, good example to me. But to have kind of this idea that, you know, I've really got to let some inner work be done for me to move into the things that God's calling me to do. So I had to really wrestle with that. I, I became a member of the John Maxwell team. I studied the DISC profile analysis and all that and became that certified. And I, I kind of went through all that and that kind of helped me a little bit. It, I started a business. I got involved in our community here in Brazil through the Chamber of Commerce. Um, but then most recently I've started um, taking a lot of classes with Dallas Willard, uh, the School of Kingdom Living. And then I've also joined this, uh, this place called the Kingdom Builders Academy. And what they've done is both of those have helped me really sh uh, find transformation in my life um, and really bring a lot of things in alignment. I would say in my past, I was super anxious all the time. My number one goal was to please my forefathers, uh, to be a good son of the church, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing, um, except it got in the way of, of my formation because I was more interested in pleasing people. And so these recent years, I've really uh, laid down some of those praise systems. Uh, my anxiety, I've laid it down, and I've allowed Christ to be formed in me. And a lot of it's through scripture memorization, obviously a lot of prayer and study. Um, and now I try to help others through the spiritual formation process. So that's a little bit about my journey, just so you know. Um, and, and through being married, having kids, I um, mean, just the, the trials of life, you know, you, you kind of, seek God a little bit more earnestly. And so what I want to do now after that brief introduction is just go through, I had, I had sent out an email and I hope most of you got it. And I asked you if you could think about or try to bring a, an item from home, like the house, just a simple item or something from the yard that kind of described how or where your life with God has been recently. And so if you, if you're prepared to share that, I'm going to have you do that. And if not, it's okay. If you don't have an item and you still want to share, that's okay. Um, if you don't have an item and don't want to share, that's okay as well. But I just wanted to get us started off on the foot to say that we are um, in this to grow, and I don't want us to be afraid to talk about where we're at. And so I'm going to stop the share, and I'm going to come up here first, um, and I've brought my item for all of you to, to see here. Um, and so the item I selected is a baby and swaddling, okay? Um, a little baby in swaddling. And I'll, I'll tell you why. I, I have been, I have been the kind of person who can't stop trying to do good on my own strength. And the hardest part, I was, I was studying the 23rd Psalm recently in the Dallas Willard school that I'm in. And the first, first, the second line says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, he makes me lie down in green pastures. And I would say for probably two years, I've been hearing God say, Brooke, you have got to stop. You have got to practice rest. You know, you cannot keep just doing things because you think you're making progress and, and bearing fruit. Um, and so re most recently, um, this got so loud in my life. And I was studying that psalm, and it was pointed out to me that why would you lie down in green pastures if there's lots of food around, if there's grass what would be the point is you would be satisfied and you wouldn't need to go eat more grass. You would just be at peace. You would be satisfied. You would lay down in the pasture. And right then this picture came to my mind of a baby in swaddling. And I believe that uh, that was my word from the Lord to say, look, I want you to, I want to tuck your arms in and I want to hold you and I want you to be still. <laughs> and as you're still, I want you to look at me and I want you to know that I'm going to take care of everything. But right now, what you need is to be still. So this baby in swaddling represents my kicking and screaming, being wrapped up in God, and me 
relinquishing myself since about June and saying, I'm going to walk and rest. I'm going to lie down in green pastures. And so I've had to, <laughs> it's been a super challenge, but I will say that I am learning and God has done some things that were way off of my radar. Um, and, and I can share those at some point, but there's not enough time tonight. But this has been my picture of my relationship with God recently is for him to say, Brooke, put your arms to your side. Let me wrap you up and you need to rest and let me help take care of some of these things. Let me show you that I am your shepherd instead of acting like I'm not. And that's kind of the message I've been. So that's kind of my picture of things with God uh, recently. And, and that, that'll kick that off. So um, I will uh, pass it off. As, uh, if, if you want to go, can you just hit? I don't know if you can raise your hand on the... Um, the reactions down there on your Zoom, or if you just want me to call on you. Lydia, are you trying to push your, to raise your hand on there? Um, I was. Okay, why don't you go? I saw you poking, so why don't you try to take an opportunity if you'd like to, to share a little bit, anything about yourself that you want to share to let us know who you are. And then if you have an item or you want to share about where you're at with God, that would be awesome. Okay, well, I'm Lydia. I'm from South Carolina, um, and uh, and I brought some some thread because, um, like, my relationship with God recently has become um, like like I'm hanging by a thread. To be honest, um, it's been a little challenging lately, especially with going with. Um, and going to like burn out last over the last year or so. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Um, it's very, very kind of you to do that with us. And uh, that's something that we can take to heart and uh, be in prayer for you at, uh, as well. But uh, thank you for your vulnerability in sharing. So I hope that through this class, you can find a little more strength than where you're at right now. I pray, pray for you to, to be able to receive that. Uh, Mar, is it Marvy or Marvel? Marvy. Marvy. Okay, Marvy. Welcome to the class, and thank you for raising your hand. And uh, mm -hmm. please share a little bit about yourself and about your relationship with God. I don't have an item, okay. but um, I live in Houston, Texas, and I've been uh, in a relationship with God for many, many years. But here, the last few months, I feel stagnated. I don't feel like I'm moving. I'm not going anywhere. I really don't feel like I'm going anywhere in God. And um, I just hope that I can regain my zeal back that I once had for God. Well, we join you in that prayer. Thank you for sharing, being vulnerable today. Um, <clears throat> Growth in Christ and Christian community is we do it together. So thank you for that. Does anyone else want to take a moment? Okay, Michelle. Well, I brought this here. Bless this mess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just recently my relationship has been messy. Um, I feel like I only pray when I need something or someone. I've tried my best to keep up with my prayers. Um, I sit down, I have my prayer book, my pens, my thoughts are right there. And I know for who and for what I'm praying for, but then I'm in my room and out the door here in my house, it's my mom, my dad, my two daughters who are 23 and 19, two babies who are two years old and want, fixing to be one year old. And then a fiance of my daughter, and it's just loud. The, I mean, my it, the babies are loud. Then the adults are even louder. <laughs> then my youngest daughter feels like it's time to talk or just hang out when she was all day on her video games. And then it's... it's it's time then for me to say, okay, I got to put everything up. It's time to shower before the babies get in there and use all the hot water. 
And then, and then my thoughts and my prayers go away. <laughs> I have a big jumble in my head. And I just put put away my stuff and it's time for bed. And I forget about that time that I wanted. Okay. That sounds like you can really use some of this to practice peace and clarity in your life and um, receive a spirit of love and discipline and sa or sound mind and a spirit of um, power, I think, a spirit of power. So that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Frank, you can receive that throughout the time we're together. Thank you for sharing and being vulnerable. Is there anyone else today that would like to take an opportunity to share where you're at with God or share about yourself, either one? Jackie? I, I think I don't see if you're I don't think your sound may be connected Jackie can you I can't hear you just not able to hear you Jackie so we may have to catch you later if your sound comes on I'll um I'll try to watch for that oh there Something's not right about your sound, so we'll come back to you, though. There'll be plenty of chances to share, but whenever you can chime in, you might just chime in and let me know, because um, I see that you're muted, but when you unmute, it doesn't come through, so. Um, anyone else want to share a little bit about about yourself or about your relationship with God? Okay, this is from Marette um, saying that um, she's from New York and, and um, isn't home yet, but wanted to show her mom has a plant and went on vacation and didn't water it. It's partly dried up, and so she feels a little bit dry, a little bit dry in her spirit at times, but sometimes strong. And so, just maybe more consistency in that uh, in that relationship with God. So, thank you for sharing, Marette. And Jackie, if you want to try to type in the chat, we can read it there as well. I still can't hear you. I'm going to go ahead and move over to, is anyone else, did I miss anyone at this point that wants to share? And I'm glad some of you are using the chat that's always a good solution um, for us today. So I'm going to go back to the screen share at this point. Um, and you're welcome to stay. You're welcome to stay um, in view or if you don't want to, that's fine. Um, One moment. Now you're seeing all of my pages here. There we go. All right. So we're going to move into our teaching session now. So all this, I don't have notes for yet, but if you can just kind of listen through, I'll have, if you want to, in a little bit, I'll have some of you read some of these slides so that it's not just my voice. Uh, but I just want to kind of give an overview today. The first two weeks will kind of be an introduction because I really want us to get our brains around what we're doing. I know we know we need help. I know we're stuck. You know, we're, we're, we need 
we need uh, to stop being having a dry relationship. We need the chaos to stop and have some peace. Um, we don't want to be hanging on by a thread. We want to strengthen our relationship. Um, and so, but I think it's I think it's important for us to understand, you know, what this is, what it's about. And uh, it's helped me a lot to understand it better because I knew I know when I, I knew when I was stuck, but I didn't understand all the parts that were working together or against me at that time. And formation or being formed in Christ has a lot of different parts to it. And I think these will unlock a lot for you. So you may not know which part of who you are needs the most formation. And as we go through the course, I think as we take each one of these, you'll say, oh, it's my body that's causing the problem or my social context, you know, or I thought it was my social context, but it's actually how I'm thinking about my social context. And so these these places will help you. But there are basically six parts and you have to be intentional about formation and so we're going to cover in the class our thoughts, uh, the thought, how, how do we transform our thinking? How does Christ, how do we let Christ direct our thinking? Like how, what, what images we hold of him, what concepts we have, our judgments, our, our perceptions. We're going to talk about our feelings and how, how those are transformed. Because even our feelings, though they're always going to be there, they're going to come up. They're also something that can be formed in Christ. These are be our emotions, our sensations. Our choice is part of, of our formation, too. So we're definitely going to be talking about our will, the way we make decisions, how our character is built. We'll be talking about the body, which is how we interact with everything. It's the part of us that takes action and interacts with people. Our social context is our just the relationships we have with other people. How, how does Christ form us to live well in those relationships? And then finally, the soul, which is the big one, because the soul brings all of the other ones together in alignment. And so if you're feeling um, like you're not making any progress toward knowing God better, having a better relationship with him, you're feeling dry, you're feeling the soul is actually trying to figure out how to put the pieces in the right place. And so your soul may feel weary uh, because the soul is trying to align things. And in your life, maybe your practices are disaligning things so that you're not feeling whole about things. And I think by the end of this class, you'll understand how to notice which one of these needs to be closer in relationship to God and then how to do that. And so that'll be one of our goals. So I think this will help. We'll definitely come back to this, but I just wanted you to see this uh, today for, uh, for, uh, for now. Let's see here. So we're going to look at a few scriptures here, and uh, these are just, to, again, to say, hey, this thing's real. God can be formed. Christ can be formed in us. Jesus literally gives us his words and says, do these. Uh, it's not like they're far-fetched. Forgiveness, no anger, uh, you know, letting go of, uh, you know, letting our words be true, uh, not bringing them to a place where we're trying to manipulate people with them um, it's possible to go the extra mile it's possible to forgive and love your enemies uh, it's possible to not worry uh, all these things jesus expects that we can do them and he showed us exactly how to do that so as we allow him to live in us i just wanted you to see some scriptures that are saying yes in fact this is what we can do this is what we're offered as christians the kingdom of heaven is at hand it's accessible to us and we can begin through the spirit to live into uh, this this life. So here's the first one uh, from Romans 12, 1 through 2. Paul ap appeals to the different, I just showed you the six different parts of, of our of ourselves that need to be formed. And Paul starts with the will. His will, he says, I urge you, I I, I compel you. You know, he's, he's appealing to our will. Um, can you direct your will in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies? And there's a second part here. Our bodies are part of this whole process. So Part of this spiritual formation is to offer our bodies. Literally, our physical, our physical body has a big part to play in our formation. Offer them as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to Him. This is your spiritual act. So your body is acting in a social context. Your body is acting forward in this way as an act of worship. Don't be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, which is a lot of times why our formation isn't working because we've got some patterns. We've got to allow him to come in and mold. 
but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Then you will know what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So in, even in this small two verses, Paul appeals to the will, to our body, um, to our social context, our actions, um, to the transformation even of our minds, um, right here, our thinking. And then finally, all together, when these are all be, being transformed, then we will know how to follow God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. And that will come through our soul being ready to go. So this is a passage that talks about that transformation. Here's another one from Colossians. If you read all 17 verses, which I'm not going to do here, but you can see here, Paul starts that with, take your, since you have been raised with Christ, he starts with that, since you've been raised with Christ. And so consider yourself, um, you're in this body, you're in this flesh, but somehow spiritually you've been raised with Christ. And since you have, he says, set your hearts on things above. Um, set, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So if you're raised with Christ and he's seated at the right hand of God and you're raised with him, right? Paul's saying, guess what? This reality, you don't feel it all the time, but this reality that you're raised with Christ and he's at the right hand of God can allow you to keep your mind and heart there. And you can do that because you died to the old life and your new life is hidden with Christ in God. Now, since all that's true, he says, therefore, you can put to death a whole bunch of stuff. You can put to death sexual immorality, impurity, evil desires, and greed, right? Not only can you put those things to death because you died to that life and your life is hidden with Christ, but you can also rid yourselves as all such things as these, anger, malice, slander, greed, filthy language from your lips, and lying. He says, you used to walk in these ways, but now you're being, you've put on the new self, and the new self is being renewed in knowledge. That's spiritual formation. The new self is being renewed in knowledge and the image of its creator. And so now you, you don't consider people as uh, slave or free, uh, Greek or Jew, um, but you consider uh, Christ is all and Christ is in all. So that it, it's a transformation of your mind, your perception, how you think, how you see the world. And all this comes... Um, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. And so not only do you put to death things and you get rid of things, but now you start to clothe yourself with compassion and kindness and humility. This is when he says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, you know, in this passage. So not only should you walk in peace or have peace, the Paul's Lord is saying peace rules your heart. And now that's an attractive life to me. If I could walk into this in this world in the kingdom of heaven where peace is ruling my heart, I can't imagine a better picture of not only someone who people would look at and say, you know, what has changed you from an anxious person to a peaceful person? But it would also allow me to be free of all the frantic so that I could go and be a servant to others, so that I can go and admonish agape love to them. Um, and administer that so that I could be an ambassador for Christ. So Paul's saying here, this is really happening. This is really true. This is something you can have, something you can you can experience this transformation, this Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then finally, I've also listed here 2 Peter 1, 3 through 11. And this passage is really powerful. We'll look at these uh, over the course, but I'm just introducing you to the idea here. That this is really possible. It's actually what should be happening is our, our Christ should be being formed in us um, as we learn to practice these things that, that help us put on that, that, that person of Christ. So here in, in 2 Peter 1, he says he's given us, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. How? Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness through these his glory and goodness he has given us his very great and precious promises right here he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them we may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desire so we can participate in the divine nature through the promises which begs the question what are these promises how do they allow us to put on Christ? How do they allow us to live 
in the divine nature. And he says, therefore, since you're able to live in the divine nature, go ahead and make every effort to add to your faith goodness. And then he says, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control. And he, he makes a list here of things you add. And if you possess these things in increasing measure, which is spiritual formation, they will keep you from becoming ineffective and unproductive. And I know some of us are saying, I'm, I'm ineffective right now. I'm unproductive. I don't want to be ineffective. I don't want to be unproductive. Well, as we talk about these promises and how you live into them, how you literally use them every day as your weapons, as your strategy, then you'll be able to cease being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of Christ. So all that, again, to say these are three passages. Just You can just look through the scriptures and you can see that what you've come to in this class is exactly the thing that Jesus offers you to be able to do. And that's exciting. It's good news, actually. It's good news to be able to be formed in Christ, for Christ to be formed in us, because it makes life truly life the way he intended it. So those are a few passages. Um, and now I want to uh, read a few quotes, but I'm going to ask you all to help me with this part, uh, if you're still uh, with me some. And Jesus says, man shall not live on bread alone. Um, and so we're, we're not, we're not, we don't just exist to get through the day. We don't just exist to get through until one day when everything's right. We're, we're literally able to live, but it's not just by bread. We have to allow ourselves to feast on some other things, to feed on some other things, to invite some other things into our life that are going to nurture us beyond food, beyond physical food. Um, and I think about Jesus who was in the wilderness for 40 days and nights, and it, it talks about how after 40 days, he became hungry. And I was thinking, after 40 days, he became hungry. Well, what was he, what was filling him up before he became hungry? Um, and uh, I believe because he answered Satan every time he was tempted with scripture, I think he was feeding on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I think he was feeding on the scripture. And through that fasting time, he was being sustained in a spiritual way. And he, he didn't need to live on bread because he was living on the bread of the word of God. And at the time Satan came, he was well prepared to be able to, when these temptations of pride, um, you know, lusting after power, kingdoms, you know, showing off for the praise of people, throw yourself down and we know the angels are going to catch you and put on a spectacle. And, you know, these main temptations that come our way every day that we kind of live by, Jesus was able to easily. Uh, at least, yeah, you know, it seems to me anyway, easily take that word of God that was in him because he had practiced putting on the word of God and he was able to move in his life, in his mission with peace and with clarity, which is what we want. We want to move through life with God, with peace and clarity. Um, and, and spiritual formation in Christ allows us to do that. So this quote by Dallas Willard and the, and the quotes after it are from the same person. He says, the spiritual simply is our life. It's what we run into, no matter what work we're doing or what circumstances we find ourselves in. The spiritual simply is our life. So we've got to understand that. We when when Nicodemus says, How do I, you know, what do I need to do? And Jesus says, you, unless you're born from above, you won't enter the kingdom. Well, if we start with the physical every day, what have I got to do? What's my task? And I see the physical as my beginning point, then it's backward. What Dallas is saying here, no matter what you do, it's going to be spiritual. You're going to run into it. If you start with the physical, your soul is going to get weary. You're going to finally run into it. But if you go ahead and start with the kingdom of heaven, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, then everything else can be given to you as well. So spiritual formation is primarily the idea that I want to know God first. I want to relate to him first. Um, and then no matter what work I'm doing, what my circumstances are, um, I'm going to find that if I can take care of the spiritual components of my body, my mind, my will, uh, my soul, if I'm taking care of that, no matter what I face, I'll be able to walk through it uh, with peace, um, with promise, with power. So that's a quote from Dallas. 
So if anyone is available or would like to, um, I can't see everyone this way, but if you want to read this, uh, unmute yourself and uh, just say your name and then go ahead and read this quote. Who, who would like to do that? Just read it slowly if you would. Anyone want to? Jackie, I just can't hear you. I don't know why. It's not. There's something not right about your sound coming through. I can see you talking, but I can't. I can't hear what you're saying. So, sorry about that. Maybe next week we'll get it figured out. I'll try to follow up with you after tonight and see if we can figure it out. So you won't have to have this problem. Anyone else? Willing to read it? Okay. If we would walk, yes. If we would walk with him, we must walk with him at at that interior interior level. He saves us by realistic restoration of our heart to God and when and then by dwelling there with his father through the distinctively divine spirit. The heart thus renovated and inhibited inhabited is the only real hope of humanity on earth. So in a nutshell um, he restores our heart to God, and then he dwells there with his Father through the Spirit. And that kind of heart, the renovated heart, inhabited by him, is the real hope that we need for humanity. And I think we all know that. I think we all see it. You know, this is the answer to the problems that we see every day, is that Christ is not dwelling distinctively through the Spirit to renovate us, to bring us to the fruitful life that he has for us and wants us to live. And here's another one. I think someone else was starting to read. Um, whoever that was, maybe could uh, read this one for me. We are not merely seeking to live our lives in a non-destructive way, but to live them in fullness in the kingdom of God that is accessible to us. Excellent. We're not just trying to get by to not be destructive. We want to live in fullness in the kingdom of God. And I 1000% believe that what we're doing this in this class is the way to live in the fullness of the kingdom of God accessible to us. Thank you for reading that. Here's another one. We can say in a preliminary manner that spiritual formation for the Christian basically refers to the spirit-driven process of forming the inner world of the human self in such a way that it becomes like the inner being of Christ himself. Now, the degree to which spiritual formation in Christ is successful, the outer life of the individual becomes a natural expression of or the outflow of the character and teachings of Jesus. I love Romans 8 where it says, you know, if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead is living in you, the spirit who raised him from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit that is living in you. So once that inner part is um, formed like Christ, it just naturally brings the expression of Christ, the character of Christ into the outer self. It enlivens us. It, it inspires us. It you know, it, it gives birth to spirit, the spirit of Christ. It gives birth to our mortal bodies and allows us to, to live by the power and presence of God. So uh, it's kind of another quote about what we're looking at here as we talk about this. This one's really fun. Spiritual formation is in practice. It's the way of rest for the weary and overloaded. It's the way of the easy yoke and the light burden from Matthew 11. It's the way of cleaning the inside of the cup and the dish, Matthew 23. And it's the way of the good tree that cannot bear bad fruit, Luke 6. And it is the path along which God's commandments are found to be not heavy, not burdensome, 1 John 5, 3. I'm almost through with the scriptures, but I want to bring this one in today as well as we get started. I like this, and Paul's really struggling to bring maturity. He really 
wants people to be formed in Christ. I mean, giving all, all of his energy for it. And um, he's talking about how we have to train, you know, uh, just like in anything we do, a marathon, playing the piano, learning a language. Um, there, there are some things that we have to commit to in order to see that prize, right? The result, the vision, right? And so he's saying, you know, do you know, do you not know that all in the race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. So run in such a way as to get the prize. Everybody who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get the crown that will, will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like some running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. And I think Paul here is brilliantly saying he knows he's going to have to submit himself to this training. And if he does, not only will he have an impact at preaching to others, but he himself won't be disqualified as he does that. And we're a light to the world, you know, and this spiritual formation not only is a huge blessing for us, not only does it bring us peace that rules our hearts, and not only does it help us see Christ is all and Christ is in all, um, not only does it allow us to have power in the social context and the people around us, but it also allows us to honestly, genuinely, um, with great authenticity, have a, a transformed life that's not burdensome. It's not striving to do five or ten extra things and say, I'm going to feel guilty if I don't. This is a real natural, honest, gentle way of Jesus to bring us forward in the capacity of not disqualifying ourselves while we also bear fruit um, in the lives of others. And Paul understood that. So he's making a case that he himself is subjected to this life that he knows to be true and right. So I training means I arrange my life. This is what we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester after next week. We're going to arrange our life around practices that allow us to do what we cannot do by direct effort. So if I were to ask all of you on this call today, this, this session, this class, if you could go out right now and run a marathon, how many of you could go do that right now? Nope, not me. I'm not. Yeah, I'm seeing shaking heads. I can't either. I'm not. No either. way. Okay. No, sir. No, sir. Now, what if what if you tried really hard? What if you thought, well, I can I'm going to think about this. I'm going to sleep on it. And then tomorrow I'm going to try really hard. And if I just tried really hard, I bet I could do it. Still nope. any takers nope. or. Uh, I, no, nope. sir. So trying harder is not necessarily the plan. It's not trying, but it's training. If you went out and I went out for the next six months and we had somebody help us, they showed us what to do to, to build up to it. Maybe it would take us a little bit longer than that. But I bet a lot of us, if we had the proper training and enough time and a right goal and good understanding, I bet at least several of us over the course of time and good training could at some point whatever pace it would be, could do a marathon. I'm convinced that some of us could do that if we had the right training. Um, and the difference simply there is that with the proper daily commitment to the small things that build a relationship with becoming a runner, becoming someone who believes that they can do it, becoming someone who's physically able to manage their body that way and their mind and their will See, all these pieces come together through training, and that training would allow us to be able to do what we cannot do on our own right now. The same thing's true with spiritual life. We, we can do some practices that will allow us to do what we cannot now do by direct effort, like live without anger, like have peace, rule our hearts. Things that we may say, there's no way today I could do that. But practices will allow us to do tomorrow what we cannot do today by direct effort, if we will allow ourselves to do the things that we can do with God's help in training. The same would be true of playing the piano, mastering a sport, or living without anger, or lust, or falsehood, or greed, or 
or envy or whatever it would be, the thing that you can't necessarily imagine about yourself right now, you say, there's no way I could do that. Even if I tried, I know I would fail at forgiving my brother. But through letting Christ be formed in us, we can arrange our life around certain practices that will allow us to have the power to do these things that we now cannot do by direct effort. No amount of willpower will get us there, but training in Christ can allow us to get to the place where we can't see possible right now. And that's the beauty of, of this. So transformation involves training and not just trying. You can go, you can go, you can go to church every Sunday and you can hear about, you know, yeah, I, I need to read my Bible more. Yes, I do. And I, you know, when I don't, I feel bad about it. And so this week I'm just going to try harder. I'm just going to try harder. That's a, that's actually a, a, a formula for failure. Um, God just wants us to use these things to relate to him. And as we relate to him, he increases our ability. He increases our desire. He increases our willpower, our bodies, uh, you know, our, our bodies of self self-denial. Um, he increases our attitude, our picture. And through that relating to him, he brings it about in a non-burdensome way. So transformation will involve training and not just trying. And I want to make that point. Timothy says, Paul says to Timothy, train yourself into godliness. So I'm almost through here uh, with my slides. Um, we got about 20 or 25 minutes. Um, but a discipline, which is what we're going to be exploring throughout this course, uh, is, is an activity that I engage in to receive power. It's an activity that I engage in to receive power. It's just like saving money. If I save for so long, it grows. And eventually, if I save for 25 years, a certain amount, every week, every month for 25 years, if I engage in that discipline, at some point over 25 years, there's going to be a lot of options for me with what has accumulated over that time. If I sit down and I play a C chord, um, F and G, which are in, in piano is the, the bass root chord, and then the four and the five, which are used in most songs. If I will sit down and play those every day for three weeks and I mix them around and I get my hands used to it, that discipline will allow me at some point to receive the power to play a song. And so if I have a good vision or a picture of what I'm wanting to become in Christ, like a person who's at peace, for instance, was one of mine, I don't want to be an anxious person. I want to be a person who peace rules my heart. If that's my picture, then I can find the right kinds of practices that will allow me to engage in those practices so that I can receive power to be a person of peace. Spiritual disciplines are a means to a relationship with God. And if they are not helping us become more loving and live more in the way of Jesus, then I would not recommend that you do the disciplines just to do them because somebody else is doing them or because you heard this idea that the spiritual disciplines are what you need. Well, they are what you need, but only if they're helping you know Jesus and become more loving. If they're causing you to be self-righteous or they're causing you to be frustrated and because you're just trying harder, then I don't recommend that you try them. Until you're ready to say, I want to know God better, and here's the one that I think will help me know God better, at that point, then you can do it because it will help you. Um, discipleship is simply the receiving of grace. Discipleship is simply the receiving of grace. And I hope that you can stick with this picture as we go through the class. What am I doing this week? Oh, I'm not trying. I'm not trying a discipline. I'm going to do something that will help me receive grace. This is going to help me know God. And when, once I've met with God, guess what? I'm going to receive grace. And if you can live in your spiritual life in this way and say, what can I do today? What can I do tomorrow? How can I build my, my life in all these ways that I can receive more grace? Then I can do the last one, which is find freedom. Um, once I've done these notes long enough, once I've received enough grace after playing the piano enough, I'm not going to have to think about C and F and G. I'm just going to be able to put my mind onto how can I explore music now 
because I'm free to do that because the disciplines have allowed me to find freedom. And that's the same thing with Christ. If it isn't producing more freedom in my life, then it's probably not the right discipline. I need to find a different one to do that will allow me to receive grace from God a little bit more. So I hope that makes sense to you. Again, I'm not going to take too much conversation at this point, but, but I just wanted to kind of share this idea with you. And I'm, I've got a couple of more things here. Um, I want to share this idea because I think it's the most powerful and the most helpful for us uh, before we uh, wrap up with a little bit of an exercise together. Transformation on the ropes. I don't know how many in this class have been on a ropes course, been rappelling or been up on a high ropes elements course. These are kinds of uh, team building things that people do. And they put you 30 or 40 feet up in the air, suspended on these ropes. And if you've ever done this, you know, they always have a class at first. So everybody's sitting there and the instructors saying, now this is your rope. This is your carabiner, which is a little clip looking thing. And they'll say, oh, this carabiner is so strong. You could hang a Hummer or a Jeep or, you know, whatever from it. And it wouldn't bend or it wouldn't break. It's going to hold that much weight. So if it can hold that much weight, how do you think it's going to do holding you? And so they'll go through this whole idea about how safe it is. And if you get up there, it's just a perfectly safe place to be. It's a perfectly fine place. It's no different than you sitting here on this log listening to me talk to you. You're just as safe up there as you are down here. And that's their whole point is they try to get that information into your body. Now, when you get up high, if you're going to jump and grab the trapeze or you're going to just do the ropes, I guarantee you that the first time you get up there to rappel or do whatever you're going to do, even though you have the information, even though you say, I believe you, when you get up there, your body is not going to believe you. Your mind is going to go crazy. Your hands are going to sweat. Your stomach is going to start to, you know, tell you that this is not okay. <laughs> and so uh, they're down at the bottom and they say, this is a perfectly safe place to be. You don't have to worry. It's going to be fine. Start across the ropes, you know, start across whatever obstacle you're going to do. And, and the first command is when you're ready, you say, on belay and belay i like to tell people is a french term that means are you out of your mind but it doesn't it actually means it actually means everything's safe is it good good to go is it, is it you know is this going to hold me are you ready and then the instructor will say belay on it's perfectly safe there's nothing to worry about we're ready you're anchored go ahead have fun relax you know <laughs> and that's kind of the command, belay on, or on belay, belay on. And so you say that, and then at that moment, that's when you have to put the weight of your body out onto the ropes course. And that's when the real test begins. Is what I've been taught, is the information I know, is me being, I'm, I'm here. Can I put my whole weight, though, on what I say I believe? Can I literally trust the ropes to be so safe that I can now get out there on the ropes and, and live it out. And now the first time you do it, you're just scared. And so you just take a small step and you figure out how the balance works. And you realize after three steps, you haven't fallen. So you're like, okay, what does that mean? Well, maybe I can take a few more. I'm, I'm now I'm halfway. Now I can see the end. I, I can make it all the way across from this tree to this tree. Um, and, you know, everybody's encouraging you. It's, it, you're doing good. You're doing great. You know, keep going. So you take another step and eventually you get to the other side and then you get down and you're like, whoo, can't believe I did it. I did it. But even then, if you went up a second time, your body would still probably tell you this is not necessarily a perfectly safe place to be. But the people on the ground, the instructors who have done this for years, they've done it enough times that they, they'll go up there and they have no fear. Their palms don't sweat. Their stomach doesn't go crazy. You know, their armpits don't sweat. They know in their mind that's been transformed because they've done it over and over and over again. They know that it's a perfectly safe place to be. So here on the ropes course, here when we talk about until Christ is formed in you, it's going to require our will, you know, our mind. It's going to require 
um, our body, it's going to require our soul. It's going to require our social context. All of these things are a piece of what needs to come into alignment for us to really trust that this relationship with God and putting it first and letting him dispense grace to us is perfectly safe. Even when everybody else tells us we shouldn't do it, there's not enough time to do it. Um, are you crazy for taking the time to do that? Um, why are you doing that weird thing, you know, in your life? We know that it's because over time we've trusted it enough. We've given ourselves over to it enough that we can confidently with joy say, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And it's the perfectly, it's most the most perfect, best place for me to be. I mean, so information alone does not transform. We need information, but we cannot stop there. More information without testing the ropes and the carabiners will never produce transformation. And those who have been transformed are changed in their thinking. And they can think about other things. You know, who's on the ground? They can think about, you know, looking up at the sky and seeing what the clouds are, do clouds are doing, even out in the middle of the ropes, because their minds can move because they're not holding the same anxiety that they once did because they've been on the course enough to know it's a perfectly safe place to be. So we need kind of a ropes course for discipleship where we allow our bodies and our minds and our souls to be available for spiritual practices so that we can start trusting the ropes um, and we can come to believe with our whole bodies that what we say we believe in our minds, we actually believe it with our lives. And so this course is a, an action in taking those steps to become the kind of people who believe with our whole body and our whole being what we say we believe in our minds. We're not just getting the information so we can be loaded down. We're getting the practices so that our, we're learning to trust in this beautiful, beautiful life with God. I mean, that's where we're headed in the class. So as I've talked and talked too much, I'll open it back up. And if you need to use the chat, please do. But what's something out of uh, this session tonight that is kind of a, an aha for you or maybe a takeaway, something that you're going to think about more, even though I didn't give you a page of notes? Is there anything that stood out to you uh, that you would like to share? And then we're going to do a closing ex exercise before we go uh, together. Uh, but would, any, would anyone be uh, or have anything you would like to share from tonight that stood out to you? Hearing none, then I would like to take a few minutes. Oh, here's a, a raised hand. Marvy, would you go ahead and speak to us? The transformation really uh, stuck out to me, you know, because that's where I'm having trouble transforming. I'm really having a big struggle with that. So that, that stood out to me a lot, a lot. Thank you. Um, I'm just had the same feeling as Marvel, the, <laughs> the training in Christ, the transformation involves training and not just trying. That also stuck out to me because like I said, being here with so many people in my home, it's hard for me to get a routine down, if you will. So it goes wrong one night and just kind of takes the rest of the week with it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Well, if y'all would, um, next week, uh, actually tomorrow, I'll send an email to all of you with the syllabus and it's going to tell you exactly what we're doing every week. That way you can see ahead of time. Um, and then every week on Wednesday, you'll get another email that'll have a note page that you can print or you can just use to watch through the notes while we go through the, the teaching. And it will also have what you need to do to prepare, which is basically bring your notes to the class, fill them out during it, 
take a picture and turn them into me. Um, and then it'll also have a, uh, what I call a relational practice. And that relational practice will be for you to use if you want to from Wednesday to Wednesday. Just you, just do it one time and more you can practice it more than that. But those are for you to start to test the ropes, uh, to put your weight on it. Say, is this really work? It's really going to transform me. Is this really going to bring me peace? It's really going to make me closer to God. Is this really going to give me the confidence I need? Is this really going to strengthen my thread to a rope? Is this really going to, you know, help me to have some consistency? I mean, so that's what those are for, to test the weight of what we're talking about. And so tonight I don't have anything to send with you uh, because it's week one, but next week you will have those. But I wanted to close our time together with a little bit of practice. We shared a little bit about where we were with God in the beginning. Today I would just like to close with a, a practice that I like to use with my family. So if you've got the chaos going on, maybe there's one or two people in your family who you could steal away in a room and say, why don't you come try this with me? This is just called the examine. You're going to think back through your day. You're not going to talk to anyone about it. We're just doing this together, but not in a way where we share. And what I would like for you to do is just for a moment, um, if you would, um, if you if where you're sitting, if you can put your feet on the floor pretty flat so you kind of got a good posture about you, and I'd like for you to, if you're willing to put your hand over your heart and just kind of place it there. And then you don't have to close your eyes, but you're welcome to. Um, and then I'd like for you just to take a few deep breaths. You're muted, so no one can hear you. Um, just stay muted and take a couple of deep, deep breaths until you're settled. And then after a couple of deep breaths, I'll direct you in what to do. Now, if you would, just think back through your day, starting from this morning, however you rose and greeted the day, whatever your first parts of the day were, moving into the morning time and just where were you, what were you doing, who were you with, what was the environment like and how were you doing during that time? Were you busy not thinking about yourself? Were you struggling? Um, get to lunchtime and kind of have that break in the day. And maybe you missed lunch. I don't know. But you went into the afternoon and kind of started to move to, toward the end of your day and supper and first class. And if, as you look back through, though, I just want you to think about this. Think of the time during today when you were when you felt closest to God and closest to other people. So if you would pick out a time today and your heart knows when you felt closest to God and closest to other people, you would just privately identify that moment. And I'll leave a few moments of silence for you to think about that. And then here, I just want to pray, God, thank you for giving us a small moment today where we were experiencing your love, our closeness to you. Thank you for a small moment today when we felt maybe connected to someone that brought us enrichment and encouragement. We thank you for that today. And then now, if you would, as you thought back through your day, where was the time when you felt farthest away from God or most disconnected? And when did you feel most disconnected from other people? Take a moment and think about that.
And Father, as we think about this moment, I just want to ask you to pour out your mercy and grace on us as we think about that. These are the areas where we know that we can go into training so that when these moments come our way, whatever they are, whether they're stressful, whether they're relational, whether they're just our own dissatisfaction with ourselves, whether we just lack trust in you, all of these places that we were far from you or from others, we just pray that you would work all things together starting right now, that as we walk through this class and this course over the next two and a half months, that you would just gently, gently invite us to learn your way, to let Jesus be formed in us in these places so that as we face them, we're more equipped to face them with your spirit, um, to face them with your honesty, to face them with the power of your promises, to face them with your presence, and to face them in such a way that they do not become burdensome anymore, that we're able to take those moments and allow them to be given to you in transformational agape love. And you can direct us to act differently, to think differently, to walk differently, to speak differently, to hold you in a higher regard during those times, and just help us to come forward in our faith in you, and our confidence in you, and just bless us with your peace. May you do all these things because you're able to do that, and even immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to your power that is at work within us. We accept that power tonight. We leave this day right where it is. We're not going to take it to bed with us. We're not going to take it into tomorrow. We just want to leave it here. We know that you'll complete it in your own way, that you'll bring it to fruit. And as we anticipate tomorrow, may we rest well in peace tonight, knowing that you have everything ready for us tomorrow, that you've gone ahead of us, that you've prepared us to do the work that you've called us to, we don't have to strive in it. We just have to listen and follow you. Just bless us to awaken tomorrow um, in your mercies and in your care, knowing that we have everything that we need. We give this day to you. We rest in you. Thank you for our first class. Continue to bless this group in every way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, thank you all. Um, Jackie, I'm going to try to, I've got your information. I'm just going to try to reach out to you about this and try to see if we can figure out what's going on with the sound. So we might, might do a test sometime if we can find a time to connect and just do a quick test and figure that out. Um, and then for all of you, I should give you an email in the morning uh, just to give you the syllabus. And then you won't have to do anything until next week. Uh, but you can practice this exam in every day if you want to. You can even bring your family to it. My family loves to do it. We just do it maybe a couple times a week. But I just ask them to share those two questions. It allows us to pray together. So maybe you can do that with your family, but I don't have any, any homework for you. But next Wednesday morning, please look for a, an email from me so that uh, you can know what to do for that day and be ready for next week's class. Okay. God bless all of you. Uh, I'm going to close it down and um, I appreciate y'all being here. So talk to you next night. Thank Bye. you.